Today we are going to discuss Chapter 1, Life in the Western Hemisphere. So, what are we trying to learn today? Today we are trying to figure out how to explain why and how early people migrated from Asia to the Americas. We are going to describe how the first Americans lived during the Ice Age. We are going to identify how the way of life of the first Americans changed as the climate became warmer. Let's get started. Before we begin, what I want you to do on your guided notes is I want you to mark on the map that looks just like this, which side is the Eastern Hemisphere and which side is the Western Hemisphere. Why is that important? Well, because the title of this chapter is Life in the Western Hemisphere. So I have to make sure that you know which side is the Western Hemisphere. Once you mark it, we will discuss as a class. Now let's imagine and discuss. So as I read, I want you to imagine this scenario. It is 14,700 years ago, and you and your tribe live in Siberia during the Ice Age. You get your food, shelter, and clothing from hunting animals such as the mammoth and the caribou. However, these animals begin to migrate or move, and you are running out of food. What do you do? Now that you've discussed and we have read or we have uh, imagined and discussed, please read page 55 and fill out your notes. Make sure to pay close attention to the theories about how early Americans came over from Asia and why. Now that we've read up on some of our people groups, let's take a look at this map. This map is showing us the ways that early Americans migrated to the Americas from different parts of the world. So let's look at the red line here. Follow my mouse cursor. We started out in Asia over here. This is what we're gonna follow. We're gonna follow this area right here. In our imagined and discuss, I had you think about Siberia. This is about where Siberia would be, roughly. So our early Americans followed animals, migrated with the animals that they hunted, across what we call a land bridge, across a land bridge. The land bridge that is talked about in your book is right in this area right here. So it's discussed that people crossed this land bridge, crossed over here into what is Alaska, came down through Canada and came into the United States and kept going and went down into South America and all of this region here. And then they began to live there. The reason our book discusses that these people migrated from Europe and Asia to the America is that they were following animals. They were following animals. So these large animals, such as the woolly mammoth, and such as the, the caribou, were moving across this land bridge up here. And our great, 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 great ancestors followed along with them because they needed them for food. They needed them to live. So look at the red line that goes from this area in Asia, Russia, Siberia, crosses over from, from the land bridge and moves down over into the Americas, down over in here. And we will discuss this more as a class. Now let's watch a video. say it's this guy but he wasn't even the first European this guy was but when they both got here there were already people in America so who were these first Americans so if the first Americans weren't some Spanish conquistadors or Vikings plundering the world who were they really? Well, it turns out they look much more like something like this, which many people today might call a caveman. But they weren't really cavemen. What you would call them is a hunter-gatherer, which means they do exactly what their name suggests here, which means they hunt and they gather things to survive. And they didn't 
live over here in America at all. In fact, they lived originally in what you would call Eurasia. So the part where Europe and Asia connect, being one giant landmass, would be Eurasia. And they would come to America about 40,000 years ago. So as a hunter and gatherer, what they would do is just be searching all the time for food. They would wander all over Eurasian area looking for food and shelter and all the things they needed to survive. And eventually they get to a location right here. And as you can notice, getting across to America would be a little bit difficult. It would require either boats or what we call today the Bering Street Land Bridge. So let's take a look at the Bering Strait. What we're talking about is the waterway between Asia and America. So a strait is just a small piece of water that are going through places. Here's another one here that is going between. Here's another one going between two pieces of land. These would be straits where a small piece of water can be passed through, separating two land masses. Now this is the Bering Strait up here at the top between Alaska and Asia, and it was unpassable unless you had boats. So like I said before, I'm going to put boats here. They would need boats or what we call the land bridge. Now a land bridge is possible between the two if you are talking about a time period known as the Ice Age. So let's take a look at the Ice Age here. I'm going to write that one more time for you. Ice Age. During an Ice Age, the polar caps, so up here like in the North Pole, for example, they would grow. There would be more and more ice and snow, and they would continue to move further south than they normally are. And whenever you have ice built like that, you have lower ocean level. So the ocean level begins to drop, which means more and more land is the growing between two pieces of land. For example, whereas the Bering Strait used to be here, there now is covered in ice and I could walk across. Or before where I could take a boat across, I don't have to go across the ocean. I can just follow a boat along the ice hunting. And eventually, as you can see, you would wind up in America. So let's bring our hunter-gatherer back into the picture. Let's say he lives in Asia, and he's wandering around hunting and gathering for most of his life. And eventually they get over to here, and now when they get here, they're no longer stopped by the Bering Strait. They can technically walk across, or later with canoes, other people can canoe across the ocean line, and they eventually are in America, and they would populate and go all the way down to the south. These people right here would be the first Americans. Today we call them Native Americans. So, now that we watch the video, and we are Back to our sheets. Oh, I, uh, I'm losing my, my slideshow. There we go. So now that we're back to our sheets, what I want you to think about, and what I want you to fill in, is why did early people make temporary homes? Thinking about the video, thinking about how our great great ancestors moved around, how the first Americans moved around, why did these early people have to make temporary homes? And temporary means that you're not there permanently. You're not there forever. You're moving around. You're moving from one place to another. So go, out, go ahead and think about it. Fill out on your sheet with your opinion on why did early people make temporary homes. So now let's talk about when people first arrived in the Americas. What were some of the challenges? What were some of the things that they had to do? So getting enough food to eat for all was often very challenging. So these early Americans lived in small bands of people. They were groups of people and they needed to feed one another. They needed to hunt together. They lived together constantly. They lived together and they moved around. Their way of life 
was fully centered around hunting and following animals as they migrated or moved from one place to another. So the reason that their lives centered around these animals is because that they gave them everything that they needed at the time. They didn't need electricity then. They didn't need all these things that we need today. They needed food and they needed shelter. These animals provided them the things that they needed, the basic, basic, basic things that they needed. So now what I want you to do is I want you to read pages 56 and 57 in your textbook on your own and answer the questions on your packet. So as you go through, you're going to read page 56 and 57, answer the questions in your packet, thinking about the video, thinking about the things that we've discussed in the PowerPoint so far. Use pages 56 and 57 to help you. Now that you've read pages 56 and 57, let's summarize and let's review a little bit. As the climate became warmer, some large animals became extinct. So because these large animals became extinct, because the climate was getting a little warmer, the first Americans went from just being hunters to what's called a hunter-gatherer. So they followed and hunted animals still, but in the meantime, they also gathered food from plants because the, the weather was starting to lighten up, the climate was starting to lighten up, starting to get a little warmer. And so they, these plants were coming out. Think about in the winter when it snows, there's not a lot of plants, there's not a lot of green. And as it warms up, the greener things get, the more plants you see. Well, these first hunter-gatherer Americans were seeing the same thing. So they started to move around and they started to pick plants to eat, berries, nuts, all of these different things. So what I want you to do now is I want you to look on the second paragraph of page 57 to see what type of food sources the hunter-gatherer ate. Take a look at that, that paragraph. Now let's look further on. 7,000 years ago in Mexico, people began to plant seeds and grow food for themselves for the very first time. So what this means is that they went from hunter-gatherer where they were moving around and they were killing the animals and they were also gathering food. So for the first time in human history that we know of, for the Americans, 7,000 years ago in Mexico, people were planting seeds and they were growing food for themselves. In other parts of the world, they'd already figured this out. But in the Americas, this was the first time. They were figuring out that they could stay in one place and they could also have plenty of food. They didn't have to follow the animals around anymore. So why do you think that learning to plant seeds was such an important discovery? Why do you think that would be important? What do you think it would mean for these early Americans? Let's discuss in class. So now that we've discussed why that, that would be important, let's take a look through the history of how these early Americans progressed and started to become more modernized. So we'd look at these hunters here. We started out 40,000 years ago. Between 40,000 years ago and 10,000 years ago, the weather was very cold, capitalized cold. It was freezing. They were just hunters then. They moved around and they hunted. They hunted, they hunted, they hunted. They weren't hunter-gatherers yet. They weren't even, didn't even know that they could pick stuff because the weather was so cold. Then in about 10,000 years ago, between 10,000 and 7,000 years ago, so for 3,000 straight years, the early Americans were hunter-gatherers. As the weather got a little warmer, more things to gather, more berries, more plants, all came out that they could eat, more greens. And then 7,000 years ago in Mexico, they discovered that, hey, you know what? We can plant seeds, we can stay in one place, and we can settle. So they started to live in communities. And that's this picture right here. This is a picture of a Pueblo in New Mexico, but you get the general idea. They started to stay in one place, they started to build buildings, and they started to live in a community where they could plant seeds, they could go out hunting when they needed meat, but they didn't have to do it to live. So what I want you to do now is what we're going to do in class and what you're going to do at home is compare the basic needs of early people and people today. So discuss what do early people need right now or what did early people need back then and what do people today need? What are our basic needs? What is it that we need every single day to survive or have a comfortable life? So why are the basic needs the way that they are.
Let's review lesson one. So in lesson one, we tried to learn to explain why and how early people migrated from Asia to the Americas, describe how the first Americans lived during the Ice Age, and identify how the ways of life of the first Americans changed as the climate became warmer. You'll see at the end of your guided notes in the review section that there are these three questions down there. All three of these are down there. What I want you to do is I want you to take a minute and answer those questions the best you can. When you are done, you will turn in your chapter one guided notes. That was lesson one of chapter one, Life in the Western Hemisphere.